Inventory surged this week, but it still wasn't enough. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do an interest rate update, which, well, isn't great news, quite frankly. And wow, so investors are buying more houses now than they did in the last couple of years. I thought higher interest rates were going to wedge them out of the market. And then there's the doom loop. Yeah, let's talk about that. And for the luxury home of the week, we're headed out to the Martha's Vineyard to take a look at a very unique property. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. I'm sure you've heard the saying before, strike when the iron's hot. Well, if you're a buyer in this market and you'd like a house and the seller doesn't have one of those offer deadline dates, then strike fast. That speed of making an offer could save you from being in a more competitive situation situation and possibly thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. And I haven't heard back from one offer that I just submitted, but it was a situation where there were more than 30 offers, 30 offers. It's just crazy. And as an FYI, I know we've talked about this before, but that isn't a bragging situation on that listing agent's part. That means they can't read the market and properly price a house appropriately to what our current market dynamics are. But anyway, now let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 3,808 houses on the market. Market. Now, inventory, it grew a lot, but yet still couldn't keep pace with last year. Now, the amount of single family homes on the market grew by over 10% from last week's levels. And this is phenomenal news for home buyers and a trend that sellers really want to keep their eye on. But the other thought is, is that was just before maybe people were trying to get their houses on the market before that more Memorial Day weekend, where you're ultimately next week, or I should say this week, going to see a dip in the amount of new listings on the market. And then the week after that, you're probably going to see some pretty impressive inventory growth. Now, last week, inventory levels crossed over the 2022 levels. And this week, even with that inventory growth, the inventory gap continued to actually widen. We currently have 235 less homes on the market today as we did the same day last year. Now, the levels between this year and 2021 did widen, however, to 286 more units on the market. Now, we had 1,337 houses come on the market this week. This is what we like to see and a rebound from the lighter inventory week that we saw last week. Now, this week's inventory levels were only 25.3% off of last year's numbers when 1,789 single-family homes came on the market. And we would have to go back to actually the week after Labor Day last year in order to find higher levels of new listings coming on the market and the four week rolling average is 1011 units so this week was a pretty great showing for new listings what buyers love to see it was another strong week for under agreements with 1056 units going under agreement now the four week rolling average is 1054 units so we were right on average we were 29 percent off of last year's numbers though when 1496 single family homes went under agreement so new listings were off by 25 percent and under agreements were down by 30 percent when compared to last year's numbers this is some welcome balance to the market, which we haven't really seen for some time. Now, there were 541 single family homes that sold last week for an average sales price of $804,000 and that median sales price of $620,000. Then that months of inventory, this is how we gauge what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a strong seller's market. With the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market that it is. This week's months of inventory ticked up ever so slightly to 1.95 months compared to last week's 1.77 months. Now, this continues to indicate that it is a strong seller's market, but has been weakening over the last couple of months. Real quick, here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help because, well, my baby girls, they thank you in advance. Now, on to the condo market. We have 2,327 condos currently on the market as of Monday. Now, inventory went up last week, which is some great news, but the 28-day change is still lower than what I would expect for the spring market with only a 6.7% increase in the amount of new condos on the buyer on the market and available to home buyers and has now happened in the condo market there are now less condos available to home buyers today than we're comparing it to today last year there are currently 70 less condos on the market than this time last year and by the way that's the lowest amount of inventory for condos this week in our history now there were 616 condos that came on the market this week like the single family market we have to go back to the week after labor day in order to see a week where we saw more condos come on the market than last week. Now, the four-week rolling average was 535 units, so this is some really great inventory growth for home buyers. Meanwhile, our new inventory numbers were 20.7% off of the same week last year when 777 condos came on the market. We had 498 condos go under agreement this week. This is a little better than last week, but still below that 510 
units that we've been seeing for the last four week rolling average. And when compared to the same week last year, there were 560 units that came on the market. So the amount of condos that went under agreement was only off by 11.1%. So inventory was down by 21% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 11%. There were 290 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $646,000 and that median sales price of $547,000. And then that months of inventory, it ticked up to 2.4 months from last week's 2.3 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. Now, interest rates had been slowly creeping up, but they broke out of the range and are now flirting with those 7% levels. I've talked about how I don't think this is a bad thing personally, at least in our market, but we have too much demand in this marketplace. That is going to push up prices. I believe it's much more important for home values to stay in a sustainable pricing range. Now, the market is an efficient marketplace and balances itself out. If there's too much demand, then your payment is going to be higher due to that higher asset price. In order to calm that demand, interest rates will go up, which allows for a leveling off of home prices, but an increase in the payment. But at the end of the day, you can refinance when those rates go down. You can't refinance a housing price. I mentioned that 30 plus offer situation. That house was listed for $450,000. In a situation with that many offers, then I'm going to anticipate the sell price for 20 to 25% over asking price. So let's just say 550 grand at an interest rate of 6.75% with 10% down. This means that your principal and interest payment would be $3,210 per month. Now let's compare this to the situation of a 7.5% interest rate, but the house selling for an asking price and the buyer putting 10% down. That means the buyer's principal and interest payment would be $2,831. That's a better deal. Still even a better deal on that house if interest rates shot up to 8% and the payment is now $2,971. Not to be a broken record, but we buy based off of a monthly payment when it comes to large purchases. The sales price matters in the sense that it's a major part of that monthly payment, but that's it. As I said last week, if you're a buyer, you don't want interest rates to go down. Lower rates just mean more competition, which will lead to prices going up even more. The X factor, that is the debt limit that I spoke about last week, it's still hanging out there, but it sounds like some progress is being made. Hopefully our politicians can actually become adults just for a moment and find a compromise. So I thought higher interest rates were supposed to chase away investors. We've seen in our multifamily market as those sales have just plummeted and are showing price declines year to date. But check this one out. Smaller real estate investors are stepping into the home market even as the big guns, they pull back. The result, fewer all cash investor offers. Of the homes that sold in December, investors snapped 8.2%. That's up 0.4 percentage points from the same time the year before. And a mere 67% of investor purchases were made in all cash offers in December, down from the pandemic era of 74% a little over a year ago. I found these stats just very interesting, as we've definitely seen activity reduce for the investor segment in our area. I was fascinated reading about this doom loop, and I just had to share it. It's now a popular term in the commercial property circles. And what it means is that it's a downward spiral created as big office buildings. They lose their assessed value and therefore pay less property tax, which reduces the quality of government and services, and then pushes the tax load on homeowners or other taxpayers. So why does this matter? Because anyone and everyone that is associated with the city should be praying each and every night that the reversal of the work from home trend changes. But as of now, the numbers, they're just not cooperating. And this is spelling trouble for a lot of cities around the United United States. Cities like Chicago and San Francisco are in a world of trouble right now. True office occupancy in San Francisco is about 44% of pre-pandemic levels, which isn't much worse than the 50% for Chicago. I personally see an opportunity to convert some of this office space to residential, but there are some major headwinds in a lot of these cities around the country. Any city planner that is acting as business as usual is going to be in a world of hurt if they don't start planning and getting ahead of this situation. And now onto the luxury home of the week, which is a single family. No, it's a multifamily. No, a compound in Oak Bluffs of Martha's Vineyard. Currently operated as East Chop Harborfront Apartments, this is currently a six-unit complex with eight bedrooms and six full baths in total spanning 3,888 square feet. It really is a dealer's choice on this one as to what a buyer could do with the property. Do they make it a one residence private enclave or maybe combine a couple units and rent out the others? The options really are endless on this one, which is what made it pretty cool. But the location is everything on this. 
as it's located directly on the harbor and supports amazing water views while being steps to the tennis club, beaches, and ferries. Being a boating guy, what I really caught my eye was the 106-foot dock with water and electric for eight slips and a 40-foot tee at the end for our ninth boat. Now, the property was built in 1952 and is nestled on 0.29 acres. This opportunity is being marketed with an asking price of $11 million, which just seems kind of aggressive to me. But what I talk about your own personal real estate needs, I do the luxury house of the week for fun. But my specialty and love are helping the normal guy, not the gal buying the $11 million waterfront Martha's Vineyard compound. And when it comes to helping people sell, well, my goal is to provide that same service that that $11 million gal is getting, but for us, not $100,000 plus property taxpayer folks, right? Every person's home, well, it's their castle, and they deserve to be treated that way. All of my information, it's in the description below. If you have any questions, please reach out. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill in your name and your phone number, and then I'm going to reach out to you, whichever way works best for you. I love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I'd love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then please drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to answer your questions. Until next time.